Welcome back, YouTubers and Man fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing at the Man Cheese as always. Got another Man 22 ratings video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be going over some of the worst ratings that were released last week uh, when it comes to Man 22 player groupings. Now, if you guys don't know, the entire Man 22 ratings are all up. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to check out your favorite teams, your favorite players. But I went through all of them and I found the top 10 guys that I think are probably the worst or the most you know, overrated, underrated, whatever you want to call it. But ultimately, the point of this video is to prove that EA's Madden rating system is either completely biased or completely broken. And I'm going to use the players that I mentioned today to prove that point. As always, if you want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. And if you think that there's a player that I didn't mention or my opinion is way off, let me know in the comment section as always. Other than that, let's, go, let's get right into the video. Now, these are in no particular order, but starting off, we're going to start off with quarterback, the highest profile position in sports. Now, we're going to start off with a guy that a lot of people thought should have been a 99 overall, and that's Aaron Rodgers. He came in at a 96, third best among QBs. Not really a horrible rating by any means, but ultimately, a lot of people felt like it should have been a lot higher. Now, if you look at the season that he had, he had 48 touchdowns to five interceptions, and he completed almost 71% of his passes. With those stats in mind, it's really difficult to think of a guy that's ever played better at the position. In fact, his quarterback rating for the season was a 121.5, which was only one point off of the all-time record of 122.5 set by Aaron Rodgers back in 2011, which means he was playing nearly identical to his almost perfect season back in 2011. I went back to look at what his Madden 2012 rating was after that season, and he still didn't have a 99. He was still only a 98 behind, guess who, Tom Brady at a 99, and Peyton Manning also was a 98 at the time. But ultimately, it's been a consistent theme that Aaron Rodgers has always been critically underrated when it comes to Madden ratings, including in Madden 21 when he came into the season as an 89 overall. Next on the list, we have uh, what I think is probably one of the biggest uh, disappointments. I'm gonna skip over Josh Allen. I think the reason that Josh Allen's rating only is an 88 is because he only had one great season. Now, typically EA wants to see a little bit more um, you know, consistency throughout the years. And his first two years really weren't that good. So I can understand a little bit why he didn't go much higher than 88. But when you talk about consistency, you can't get much more consistent than Ben Roethlisberger. And I'm not necessarily a big fan of Big Ben, but the guy's only coming in at a 78 overall. Coming from a guy who is a seven-time Pro Bowler, he led the league in passing in just, just two years ago, in 2018. He's got two Super Bowls, and he's coming off of a pretty decent statistical season. He had 33 touchdowns to only 10 interceptions with a 94 quarterback rating. How is all of these accolades being overlooked to the point where he's essentially tied with a rookie quarterback who never threw a pass? Now, I know Big Ben had a down season, and as the year wore on, he kind of looked worse and worse, but a 78 overall rating for a guy that led his team to a 12 and 3 record as well as like i said a 33 touchdown to 10 interception ratio is pretty darn good in the nfl i don't understand how he drops that low when he's a guy that should be getting the drew Brees treatment for years drew Brees had a much higher rating than he probably physically was capable of having just based off of reputation so why does ben roethlisberger get such a horrible quarterback rating when he's kind of in that same category of surefire hall of famer uh probably just riding off in the sunset soon I mean, he had four straight Pro Bowls not too long ago, from 2014 to 2017. And like I said, 2018, he led the league with a 5,129-yard passing performance. So if we go back to the idea with Josh Allen that these uh, you know, ratings are largely um, you know, credited based off of consistency year after year rather than one good year or one bad year, it doesn't really make a lot of sense when it comes to Ben Roethlisberger because his last full season was in 2018 where he threw for a career high and a league high 5,129 yards. So basically the last full season he had, he had a terrific season. Then last year, he had a, you know, kind of an average to down season, and then he immediately drops to a 78. Next up on the quarterbacks, and the last quarterback on my list is Joe Burrow. Now, here's another guy that I'm going to use to prove a point about how Madden's rating system is ultimately pretty biased. Typically, when they have uh, teams that they don't expect to perform well, they just give all the players lower ratings. Joe Burrow, when he came out as the number one pick in Madden 21, was only rated as a 76, which is pretty respectable. Not a horrible rating, especially 
especially when you see that Trevor Lawrence was only a 78. Uh, but what Joe Burrow did in his rookie year, I think he proved beyond a doubt that he is a franchise quarterback. I think he played really well. And to only go up one point in the rating system is kind of embarrassing. He only played in, I think, 10 games, but he had 13 touchdowns to five interceptions, which is outstanding for a rookie. He also was on pace to go well over 4,000 yards before his injury, and he also ran for three touchdowns. With all that success proven in the NFL, playing for a bad team, playing behind a horrible offensive line, um, he still only went up one rating point to a 77, which to me just proves that players on bad teams just get bad ratings regardless of what they do in real life. Moving on to running backs, we have another high profile player that I feel should have got closer to a 99, and that's King Henry. Derrick Henry had 2,000 yards last year, which I think was only the ninth running back in NFL history to do, but his story goes back way further than that. The previous year, he basically became a 99 in my eyes when he carried the tennis see Titans all the way to the AFC Championship game. If you include that historic playoff run that he had, he has more yards after contact in the last two years than any running back in the entire NFL has total yards. And despite all that, he doesn't even get the highest break tackle rating. They did give him a 99 overall stiff arm, which I think is just obvious at this point. But how does Nick Chubb and Dalvin Cook have a higher break tackle rating in Madden 22 than Derrick Henry? A guy who I'll repeat has more yards after contact than any running back in the NFL has total yards over the last two years. Next up, I have three guys that I want to mention. Uh, all of which were rookies last year, and I can't understand based off of the production they had how their ratings turned out in the start of Madden 22. The highest rated second year running back out of all the rookie running backs last year is James Robinson, who had a very big year out of Jacksonville. The guy was an undrafted free agent. He definitely you know, came out of nowhere. He went to the Pro Bowl. He had an amazing year. I'm not gonna complain about his rating necessarily. I'm gonna complain about the consistency of the rating chart because to me the best rookie running back last year was probably Jonathan Taylor who for some reason even though he was a second round pick had more yards and more touchdowns was only comes into this year starting off as an 83 now make that make sense to me there's also Clyde Edwards Hilaire who was a late first round pick obviously plays for a much higher profile team with the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs he's coming in at an 84 despite the fact that he had less yards, less games, less everything than Jonathan Taylor. So out of those three running backs, all of them were rookies last year and Jonathan Taylor outperformed them all. So why does he have a lesser rating? He doesn't even have the highest rating on his own team. Marlon Mack is a higher rated running back on the Colts. Jonathan Taylor had more rushing yards and more rushing touchdowns in his rookie campaign than Marley Mack has ever done in any of his four seasons up to this point. So how does Marlon Mack have an 84 overall and Jonathan Taylor have an 83 overall? Like I said, the consistency of these ratings just make no sense at all. Moving on to receivers, one of the most popular and high profile receivers that people say didn't get the respect he deserves when it came to the Madden ratings is probably A.J. Brown, who once again is probably a higher profile player for the Tennessee Titans. He's definitely a really good player. I think he's going to a Pro Bowl or two. Uh, but if you look at his stats, here's a guy who barely broke the thousand yard mark uh, t the two years that he's played in his career. He had 1,051 in 2019 and 1,075 in 2020. I think of a guy who's much lower on this rating scale by the name of DJ Moore from the Carolina Panthers. He's only an 84 overall compared to AJ Brown's 86, but in the past two years, he's beaten him in yards both times. When you look at he's behind guys like Will Fuller, who's never had a thousand yard season in five years in the NFL, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I also want to take a look at three uh, second year receivers similar to the same vein as the running backs. Chase Claypool, T. Higgins, and Henry Ruggs. All three of these receivers have the same 78 overall rating, despite a huge difference in rookie year production. If you compare the rookie stats, Chase Claypool and T. Higgins were both second round picks, uh, while Henry Ruggs was the first receiver taken. But ultimately, the stats tell a completely different story. Chase Claypool had almost 900 yards, 9 touchdowns, and 62 receptions. T. Higgins had a very similar season with 67 receptions, 908 yards, and 6 touchdowns. While Henry Ruggs was the biggest disappointment, maybe of the entire draft, 
only having 26 catches for 452 yards and two touchdowns. So based off of that alone, you would think that Chase Claypool and T. Higgins would have passed Henry Ruggs in the rating scale, but sure enough, they did not. I don't even understand how Henry Ruggs' rating went up. Henry Ruggs' rookie rating was a 76 to lead all receivers in the draft. How did it go up two points after a very disappointing season? Meanwhile, C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys had a very consistent season with Chase Claypool and T. Higgins. He had 74 receptions for 935 yards and five touchdowns. Like I said, that they're all splitting hairs very close seasons but for some reason cd lamb comes in this season has an 81 which takes me back to my theory based off of this is all a popularity contest teams that are typically expected to do poorly or teams that have less of a following typically get worse ratings teams like the Bengals, where a team like the cowboys typically get higher rated players as far as cowboys players go i think that that's pretty consistent when it comes to a lot of their star players if you look at guys like uh zika Elliott especially another running back I know I already finished up the running backs but he comes in with a three point higher rating than what his Madden 21 rating ended at he ended at an 85 after having easily his worst season he didn't even break a thousand yards he had 935 yards so to me an 85 rating was appropriate I don't know what he could have did in the offseason to raise his rating three points to an 88 to just barely slip into the top 10 when it comes to Madden running backs. I know, once again, through name recognition, through consistency, he deserves to be there. That's that's the two sides of the argument. I've already argued that for Ben Roethlisberger based off of that consistency factor that they should be rated higher, but you can see that that's not consistent throughout Madden's ratings. And I think that's the reason why you see people getting so frustrated with the Madden ratings every year. We all have eyes. We all see how certain players are playing better than other players but it just seems like players that are either more popular like tom brady or on more popular teams like the cowboys whether that's accurate or not it can just be frustrating for fans of other nfl teams who feel like their favorite players are playing really well aren't getting the respect that they deserve so i'm gonna go to my end the video there if you guys agree or disagree let me know in the comment section if you want to see more videos like this hit the like button i'll do that other than that thanks for watching man much it out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.